Hi, Doug here. So judging by this sticker right here, we have an exciting teardown today. So this here is the top half of a scanning electron microscope. It's basically the world's most overbuilt CRT electron projector gun. And we're going to explore it today. So first thing you're going to notice, kind of obvious besides the radiation sticker here, is that. That is the power cord. Well, it's a power cord for the electron gun. This is the high voltage input. This runs many kilovolts. This will probably be about 50,000 volts DC, and it has three conductors on it. So you have a ground and then two hots. The reason it has two hots is because there's a filament inside, which we'll talk about in a minute, that's based at the higher voltages, but allows to power the heat filament or the uh, uh, electron boiler, if you will, to get the electrons off, and then the high voltage is used to accelerate it. And this is a very high voltage rated uh, cable inside. Now, the unit itself doesn't really have much else going on. It says here on the front here, caution radiation. This equipment produces radiation when energized. This is the important part here if you ever see the sticker. It's not naturally radioactive. There's no ionizing radiation. This only produces radiation, which is technically in the X-ray band, whenever the high voltage electrons bombarding metal. Anything above 10 kV or 15 kV, you start getting into uh, electron or uh, X-ray emission from electron bombardment. And that's basically how an electron gun works. And to be operated only by a qualified personnel, well, I guess I'm qualified. So we're gonna rotate this around and you kind of get a glimpse at the amazingness that's going on inside here. So you see the beautiful polished stainless inside here. This is the main vacuum port. This would have come out the back of the electron microscope and gone down to the vacuum system. Uh, there would have been a roughing pump to pull down the vacuum and then a turbo molecular pump to pull down even further. This one might have had an oil diffusion pump giving its age. And this is where the vacuum would have been pulled. And vacuum is very important in this because just like a CRT television, it needs to have everything removed so the electrons have nothing to bounce off of when they're being accelerated. And then here's your high voltage input. So we're going to spin this back around. This little unit here, uh, which got me so excited when I first picked it up, it is very heavy. This is about 50 pounds for this little thermos looking thing. First thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the top here. And I should have the right bit ready to go here. I do. So we're just going to pull this off. Whenever you're working on something like this, get yourself a bunch of these little stackable bins because, boy, it makes life nice storing all these hardware and figuring out where everything goes. So let's take off this lid here. And I see a very large silicon rubber seal. So this is your large vacuum gasket that seals up the backside of this lid. Now, I'm going to pull this lid off just to show you. There's normally a hinge screws mounted on the back. I'm going to lower it down so you can see it here. So this is a very large, um, basically binary connector. And in the center here is your main high voltage input. And this is a large insulator. And then you have your ground output on here. This is like a, feels like a silicon rubber inside. We're gonna rotate this around. And this is where it gets gorgeous. This is the electron gun. So this is literally a gun that shoots electrons out the very small hole there in the tip. And this guy does live off, lift off, if I be very gentle with it. And inside here, you'll see those two pins? Underneath this cover here, which I'm a little hesitant to remove at the moment, I think it might unscrew. Again, I you're learning as I am as I go through this here. Because not every day you take one of these apart. Yeah, it looks like it unscrews. I'll be very gentle with it. I'll do a close-up photo of this for you guys, but inside the tip here is the electron emitter filament, and it is it goes down to I think one micron. It's only a few atoms across. Uh, at the tip of that because you want it to be as precise as possible to get the tightest electron beam you can and you can see the bombardment that has happened on the inside of this again I'll link to a close-up photo here um, I'm going to set this or put this back together real briefly because I don't want to risk damaging that filament because I want to get that under a electron or actually under a light microscope so we can try to get some shots of it be technically to get under an electron microscope ironically to be able to view that precision and again, this is all just protector, plus this acts as your um, primary electrode that does the accelerating, if you will. Back down to this guy, you can see that there are just some gold-plated contacts inside here uh, that make contact with that electrode. And the reason there's two here is because of the filament. So that filament is heated up at around, I think, six volts, a few amps, to get it glowing. And when it's that hot, it allows electrons to come off freer. And it basically boils them off. And then this whole metal router ring is part of the main electrode. So it's electrically insulated in a way from everything else and held at a higher potential to then be accelerated for later use. So we're gonna go ahead and stick that guy back into place like so. And this guy right here is probably about 12 pounds. It is ridiculously heavy. We're gonna go ahead and slide that out of the way. 
So now we're left with this. Well, it doesn't look like much. If I tip it forward here, you can look down inside. And that's where the electrons go. And you can see how polished that is inside. It's absolutely gorgeous. Now to get this stuff apart, this thing came with some specialty tools that you need to get this stuff apart. And this guy here is a specialty gripper that allows me to reach into the top and pull out the main guard. Actually, I think this might be the anode for the electron acceleration again, learning this as I go. So this is charged to the one voltage, the electron gun charged the other, and this is what causes the acceleration to get the electrons shooting as fast as possible down through that very small aperture. So that pulls out. And what we're left with inside is just that brass rod, at least what it looks like. So next step, if I remember right, is I need this other specialty tool here that's threaded on one end. And I basically just stick that down inside the top here. I thread it onto that piece like so. And then I just pull. And probably should have done that a lot more gently. But here is the electrode or the tunnel that the uh, electrons travel down. Again, a highly precision piece. And this is sealed and this maintains the vacuum. And that's important when we get through the rest part here. So I'm gonna set that aside plus the specialty tools that we just took out. And now we're left, but again, not much different. We basically just have a hole. Now that we have that hole, we should be able to remove this top section. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna remove these bolts around the frame. There we go. Again, these little cups are great for keeping track of your hardware as you go. So in theory, this piece should separate now. Yes, it feels like it wants to. And we can lift that off. So again, there's the, the inside. This is where your main vacuum would come in. This is a, the connection point for that vacuum. And then here's where things start to get gorgeous. This inside here is one of your main deflecting coils. So this wire here has your uh, electrical potential comes in and you have these four coils. And by changing the potential or magnetic field on these, you could steer the electron up, down, left, right, or on diagonals. So this works exactly like a CRT projection TV or tube where it steers the electron beam to draw the image on the screen. And this is how the term scanning electron actually comes from because it allows you to scan the electron beam. So you can move left to right, come down, and scan across your image or across your sample to get your image. And if you know where you sent the electron beam and you can detect how many electrons bounce off, you can then build an image off of that. So it's a really cool system. It has to be very precise. And again, the calibration and accuracy of all of this is just incredible. So that's pretty much that piece. Not much more to take apart there. So we'll set that aside. Now we're down to this core here that weighs, oh, good gracious, a, a ridiculous amount of weight. So it'd be curious to see what this is. So next thing we have here, it looks like we have this guard. And I think if I remember right, this guard here sticks up and blocks this slot. The reason that guard there in this slot, so this, none of this part is under vacuum, which is the convenient part about having that tube that passes down through this section is the vacuum's maintained only where the electrons are. None of the wiring has to be subjected to that ultra high vacuum. This guard, because your x-rays are being produced, keeps the x-rays from coming out through this slit into the environment. So it's basically just an x-ray block that helps protect the end user. So the next step we're gonna do is we're going to take off the safeties. Because it wouldn't be a DJD Labs video unless we did that. So take that safety off and then we'll remove these screws, which I can only assume are gold plated. They're amazing. I'll set those over there. And then next, there's another specialty tool we need, this little guy. And this will thread down into here. And this should let me pull this up and out. I feel like I'm diffusing a nuclear bomb here. There we go. So this tube, as you can see, is much larger than the primary stage one. The primary stage one, electron is moving in a perfectly straight line. You've now gone through that deflection yoke. So you've now steered it. So it's got a much larger aperture that it can move at. Well, large according to an electron. Uh, so we'll go ahead and we're gonna remove the specialty tool here. And you probably won't be able to see down there, but it's basically just a straight tube all the way down through. And then these two points here are of interest. Um, you'll see there's a culmination point and then a gap and then copper. 
This copper is non-ferrous, so it, it will not affect the magnetic field. These are for focusing. So there's basically two lenses like you have in a regular optical microscope. And those lenses basically focus the electron beam to allow you to focus onto the target, which is incredible. Because think about a moving electron works very similar to a wavelength of light because technically an electron is a wavelength um, or a wave, which is really cool. So we're going to set that piece right there. And then looking down inside here, you'll see it's just another hollow tube. Again, that vacuum is passed through this system. So we're gonna go ahead and remove these bolts. Okay, now we got those removed. I'm gonna drop those into a cup as well. And then we're gonna try to lift this piece off. Oh, that has a good seal on it. So again, a beautiful piece of just heavy machined stainless. And this is a vacuum barrier, as you can see the, by the O-rings inside here and the O-ring there, it seals it in. You can probably already get a hint at the amazing stuff that is inside here. Um, there's a name for this kind of winding of coils and it's probably the most expensive way you can wrap a wire. It is absolutely precise. Each layer lays within the gap of the next one. As you can see this little spiral pattern that goes around here. As you can see, as each wire moves up one level as it goes around this large coil, it is an incredible thing to see. So that's basically your one focusing coil. And that coil sits right in the middle of where that copper piece is in there. That allows it to focus that magnetic field through this copper and not touching the ferrous steel on the sides. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at the bottom of this. And it's still heavy. So. This part here would be exposed to your large vacuum chamber at the bottom. This is where your sample would go. So I think there's a few more focusing elements at the end bit down here, maybe some sensor arrays that I just didn't get from this piece of machinery when it was scrapped. Um, and that goes down to your sample and does the rest of your stuff. So this is basically the primary part of the cathode ray tube, if you will. And from here, this would go out through the rest of your television if it was a normal TV. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip this the rest of the way over, like so. And we're gonna pull out these bottom bolts. Okay, so with those all loose, we're now further in than I've ever been before. So this will be a learning opportunity for all of us. So let's see if that lifts off. Whew. Oh, would you look at that? That, <laughs> I can now see why this thing is so heavy. That is the most ridiculous electromagnetic coil I've ever seen. Um, that's gotta be five pounds of solid copper. Uh, again, the inner core here now, you can see is empty. This is the secondary focusing coil. The primary focusing coil lived in this section. And then these wires connect the two down to each other. So at some point I'm gonna have to uh, disassemble this further. It looks like it actually might be glued in place. Um, I'm just gonna set that back in there. I'm trying not to pinch all these wires in the process. There we go. Um, but yeah, so this is, the makeup of an electron gun, so or for a scanning electron microscope. You have your primary electron gun here that shoots your electrons out by a boiling element that goes through this small tube here, which then progresses up to this larger tube here that then passes through your deflection yoke here to steer it, and then goes through your two focusing coils here and here to basically focus it down. So basically, you're taking your bullet, if you will, of your electron coming out, you're accelerating to a very high rate of speed. You're steering its trajectory to scan along. You're focusing it down so a single electron is bouncing off each location or very close to it of your sample. And then there's a detector, it picks up the backscatter off of the environment and you're able to detect an image based on that. So it's like shining a flashlight at an object. It's, uh, and you focus down to say a single photon and you just scan it across an object in pitch black. And all you have is a light sensor in the other part of the room that detects how much light reflects off. Based on the reflectivity as you scan your flashlight across, you can build an image from that item as you scan it. It's a really cool system. But as I experiment more with this and try playing around with some electron gun firing into a vacuum, I'll be sure to do some more videos. But if you have any questions, let me know. If you want to see anything further, again, let me know. Thanks very much for watching.